Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome into the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Wednesday, July 27th, 2022. Live from Indianapolis, Indiana for Big Ten Media Days. We got my guys here, Steve Hellwagon and Patrick Murphy. I am Dave Biddle. I cannot wait to talk about all of this good stuff. Um, we will start with what's going to happen later today with Ohio State before we get into what happened yesterday with uh, some of the other teams, such as that team up north. But we'll get into like what we're looking forward to today from the Buckeyes. We have Ryan Day. We have C.J. Stroud, Jackson Smith and Jigba, and Ronnie Hickman all going today. Which one do you guys want to go first? Uh, I can go first. Okay, Steve goes first. Like, so what are you looking forward to hearing the most from Coach Day and the player reps today, Steve? Well, you know, again, I, a lot of the focus on the team for 2022 is on the defense. Everybody knows they have the nation's number one offense last year. They do lose Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. And I think a big question there is who's going to replace them at wide receiver figure Marvin Harrison and Mecca Yuka figure you're going to be fine on the offensive line. The holes that are there figure G Scott and Kate Stover and Roy are going to be okay at tight end. So any place on offense where there's a hole, it looks like it's pretty well done, but I think the problem I think for this team is on defense and uh, the big concern, I guess, probably the better word. And I think that that's what we want to hear from Ryan day is that uh, the, all the study that they've done for eight months, that everything they've put into this with Jim Knowles and, and the guys and everything, a lot of the same guys are going to be playing on defense this year, but the final results got to be 10 times better. And uh, if they want to win the national championship, so we'll, We'll see beginning when uh, camp starts here in a few weeks and obviously the season with Notre Dame on September the 3rd. But I want to hear how optimistic Ryan Day, Ronnie Hickman in particular are about this defense. Yeah, Patrick Murphy, um, I can't wait to hear from Coach Day today and the players. Um, obviously, he's going to be asked a lot about the defense and about everything else. But um, what are you most curious to hear about Coach Day and some of the the players referred to today? Well, I agree with a lot of what Steve said. I mean, obviously, those are the major talking points. When we were talking to, to other guys yesterday that, that cover other Big Ten teams, that's what, what they kept asking guys that I spoke to was, you know, is this defense going to be legit? Because everyone thinks Ohio State's going to win the Big Ten. Everyone thought Ohio State was going to win the Big Ten last year, and, and the defense was ultimately the problem in that Michigan game, Oregon game too, but if we're just talking Big Ten – and then I think that the consensus is if Ohio State, and when we've talked about this, has a top 30-ish defense, then the Buckeyes should be right there at the end of things and obviously should should finish at the tops of the Big Ten. I'm also interested, and Dave, you and I talked about this a little bit on Monday, just the distribution offensively, how they're spreading the ball around. What What's the plan of attack there when you have so many mouths to feed? And, and they've had this problem before. There's, there's no doubt about that. It happened under Urban Meyer. It's happened under Ryan Day. But I mean, even now, you know, on top of the receivers that we've talked about a lot, the running backs, how do you spread the ball around with them? You know, C.J. Stroud is, is obviously being talked about as a Heisman Trophy favorite by a lot of people. But, you know, you, you also want to keep Travion Henderson, Mayan Williams, Evan Pryor happy. And, and Ryan Day's probably never had quite this many weapons when you throw the running backs in there and potentially a tight end or two that might catch some passes this year. Maybe even, you know in total what Jeremy Ruckert was able to do last year. So I'm curious just how Ryan Day kind of pictures this offense looking this year, because obviously every year it, it changes a little bit based on the personnel they have and, and kind of how they are planning to attack that going into fall camp. Yeah, I just, there's so many things. I mean, we'll get coach day for like 10 minutes at the podium, which is, will be like basically nothing yeah. than that breakout room for an hour. Yeah. That's where the meat is my friends and keep it locked to Bucknuts for all of that. I am looking forward to hearing from Coach Day about, uh, you know, guys coming back from injury, guys like Josh Fryer, Lathan Ransom, and others, as Patrick and I talked about on Monday's show, and Steve and I last week as well. I'm curious to hear about, you know, what he says about some of the injured guys. He doesn't like talking to the media about injured guys. I wouldn't either if I was a coach, so Most I get it. Most of the time. I, Sometimes I, he does. I, this far away from the season, he'll be good yeah. about it. All right, let's get into this. So you guys, my guys were asking questions today, excuse me, yesterday at uh, the press conferences. And uh, let's get into Jim Harbaugh before we get into Kevin Moore and getting peppered by questions from like my guy Steve Hellwagon and others. Um, all right, let's get into Harbaugh. Guys, Steve, how did Harbaugh handle things today? 
What are your impressions of, of Mr. Jim Harbaugh? Oh, he was quirky as always. And, uh, you know, basking a little bit in the glow of, of winning uh, his first Big Ten championship or what could be his only Big Ten championship. Is the, <laughs> the head, when, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to say over under on Big Ten championships for him is 1.5. And take I think take the under. Um, but uh, there were some questions that did come up about – uh, him interviewing with the Minnesota Vikings and what impact that's had on recruiting and everything. And he just kind of sloughed it off and uh, disadvantage or, or struggles. Well, what struggles are you talking about? So, you know, he, he's still uh, a little bit of an obstructionist at times when he doesn't like the questions. But, uh, yeah, he, he seemed really upbeat for the most part. He got in a little bit of a tete-a-tete with a, a reporter from Michigan asking him about – the non-conference schedule this year playing UConn, Hawaii, and Colorado State. And Ohio State was stuck in that a few years ago when Cincinnati was the marquee game on the non-conference schedule when a, a team fell out or a contract fell out or whatever. We don't know what's happened in Michigan, but uh, Jim Harbaugh wasn't providing any details saying that the reporter needed to talk to the athletic director and he has nothing to do with scheduling the games is how he kind of put it in a very uh, – I don't know, brusque type way, just very matter of fact, like really, what are you talking about type thing? Like, like he didn't even know who they were playing. So I don't know. He's a, he's a weird bird. That's for sure. He's a weird bird. He is. He is. And Patrick, you can add anything to that. Um, what, were your, what were your impressions from Harbaugh? What do you expect out of the Wolverines this season? I found it funny that he led with how great this off season has been for the Wolverines, because I think if you ask people that cover Michigan, people that are fans of Michigan, they wouldn't call this the offseason they expected coming off of the team's first Big Ten championship, the first college football playoff experience, uh, appearance. The recruiting has not gone well. Now, I don't know what's happened in the facility, and, and I think that's more what he was talking about in terms of how they looked in spring practice, how they've looked during the summer. Obviously, we're not covering that program on a day-to-day -day basis, so we don't have as much inside knowledge of it. But to just come out and – you know, basically, his his first thing he said was how great this has been this offseason. I don't know if he's busy basking in the glow of his, his as Steve put it, his one Big Ten championship and thinks that this is just going to roll. You know, they may be a, a talented team this year. I mean, they may arguably be the second best team talent wise in the Big Ten behind Ohio State to answer your question about kind of where I, I put them. But, you know, the, the way that Ohio State just keeps reloading and now you've got to deal with what we think will be a much improved defense it just it doesn't seem to me like this was the offseason to the outside world that Jim Harbaugh is depicting. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they've really done some great work with with the players that are there and, and the new coaches. And he talks some about each of the new coordinators that, that Michigan has. But from an outside perspective, it does not seem to be as rosy as Jim Harbaugh painted it. We'll see what happens once the, the games start being played. All right, let's get into this. I thought there was a lot of interesting stuff from Kevin Warren today. Steve Hellwagon peppering him with questions. Um, I think he liked your question. It was it was a long question. It was a good question, and um, but I want to get into like a lot of what he said. So let's start with this. There was three main things that I thought were really uh, intriguing from Kevin Warren's press conference. I'll start with the upcoming TV slash media deals. He says, obviously, I feel very good about them. Yes, I bet you do. And he says he thinks they're going to be finalized soon. Steve, break that down for me. Who do you think will be the media partners? And, and just like, when do you think those will get finalized? Yeah, the very much the, the speculation is out there that ESPN could be on the outside looking in and maybe they didn't want to pony up the money to retain the secondary Big Ten package. You think Fox is probably going to continue to hold the number one uh, package. And there's some talk that CBS wants a 330 Big Ten game to kind of replace what uh, they're losing here. Soon. The home team for uh, uh, the 24-7 yes, sports guys. Yes. Yeah, go CBS. Yes, okay. go CBS. So. <laughs> Uh, potentially could be uh, a CBS package as well. Uh, I, I wonder about that ESPN because there's just so much tonnage in this with ESPN games and ESPN2 and ABC and everything like that. Um, there's also a possibility of um, a streaming service, Apple or somebody taking on a, a series of or games. Amazon, yeah, or Amaz Amazon. And it's yeah. good that they're like there is two of them because yeah. they'll be competing for that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's so. there's plenty of options out there. I think that uh, check your local listings is going to become <laughs> a, a favorite reprise for Big Ten fans going forward because 
you're not going to know from one week to the next where, where to find your team playing. That's right. All right, let's get to the next one that I found very interesting. And Steve, you can touch on this too if you want to. So when asked about uh, conference expansion, Patrick Murphy, he said, uh, I'm not ruling it out. Basically meaning if Notre Dame wants to join, we, we, right. we'll have them. And if they want to bring Stanford along, that's cool too. Um, but he said, of course, we're not going to expand just for the sake, sake of expansion. I mean, that's nothing um, – Shocking, but what did you make? Like, read between the lines. What did you make of his comments there about expansion? He wants to be at the forefront of things. And obviously, they weren't the first conference to go to 16 teams. The SEC did that with Oklahoma, adding Oklahoma and Texas when, when they joined. But he made it very clear today, Kevin Warren did, that, that they want to be on the forefront. They want to be, um, you know, one of those teams that's kind of setting the tone for college football or one of the conferences, excuse me. And I think that that will mean potentially going further if, if there's the right teams. Now, as you said, Dave, he did say these have to be the right teams, and that just doesn't mean on the football field. He talked a lot about academics and the fit with the Big Ten and, and how USC and UCLA both fit that. Um, obviously, geography doesn't matter anymore. So if Notre Dame wants to join, great. If Stanford wants to join, I don't think that the fact that they're out on the West Coast has any issue anymore because we, we've seen that you can bring in teams from the East Coast to the West Coast. And he was even asked a little bit about that and basically said, we'll figure it out. Uh, they have a committee that they're putting together to kind of work with USC and UCLA to get them ready. Also said that they are going to be full members uh, coming in. They'll get full revenue right away, which was not the case with Maryland and Rutgers when, when they joined. Because so. USC is not Maryland and Rutgers. That is true. Yeah. Wait, you, well, can, you can say UCLA might be in football, but like, like uh, <laughs> USC is not. Uh, I mean, they have been maybe in the last 15 years. But, yeah, I, I fully expected that the L.A. schools would get full membership when they join us, meaning full money. Steve, anything you want to add to that before we move on to the next topic? Yeah, I think just if there is a, another school or collection of schools that comes in, they have to bring value for the existing members and they have to increase the per year payout. Uh, they can't be a revenue drain, obviously. So uh, that would be the only way it would make sense is if there's a, a school out there that can that can bring in revenue, Notre Dame potentially, maybe some new territory like Washington or Oregon or North Carolina or Virginia, I don't know. Not sure what direction this is going to head. All right, let's finish off with this, my friends, before we get over to Lucas Oil Stadium for today's events. We'll start with Steve. We'll end with Patrick. All right, so Kevin Warren was also asked about NIL. I found this interesting as well. He, he's like, he's like, I, I really like NIL. He kept like giving the disclaimers. I love NIL. It's really good. And then he said, but... The big but, um, we've got to get some federal regulations. I don't know if getting the government involved is the best way to go about it, but whatever. We need some guardrails. Our federal I, government? Ike, I like, the one, say, like the one in Washington, D.C., the, the United States? Like, that doesn't, like, no. Like, how about how about just get, like, college football people together and, like, figure it out? Yeah, like, sit in a room and figure we, it out. We need guardrails. I agree with the final point. We need guard, guardrails. I don't know if it needs to be the federal government, but we need guardrails. I did find his comments on NIL interesting. Overall, he's a fa he, he's in favor of it, but he is adamant we need to have some guardrails. Well, they're asking the government to come in and help regulate their industry. And, and sometimes when you do that, you can invite some real trouble. And uh, maybe they'll overreach and do something that wasn't intended or, or wasn't. But what they want to do is they want to write it, hand it to Congress, and have Congress make it the law of the land is what it sounds like. And I'm just not sure. I mean – you're telling me in this time with all the issues that our government, you know, with oil prices and, and the different debates that are out there, um, don't have anything better to do than to figure out for college athletics how, you know, players should get their car deals. I, I don't know. I'm just uh, <laughs> I'm a little gassed at the whole thing. A blue ribbon committee should sit down with student athletes and collaboratively hammer the thing out and make that the rule of the land uh, for all colleges. Patrick, finish us off, man. Like NIL, I found his comments interesting. What did you uh, think of what Kevin Warren said about NIL and like kind of forecast it? Do you think there will be guardrails in the near future? Or is that just like, is the NCAA too toothless for that even to happen? I don't know what they're going to do. Right? I mean, we've heard this. We heard this from Brian Day and Brian Hartline when we talked to them at the end of spring practice. Some of the other coaches yesterday said similar things that it needs to not be a, a recruiting tool, for instance, or not something that you can sell in recruiting necessarily in terms of actually telling players how much they're going to make, things like that, which I think is is pre been pretty consistent across the Big Ten. The, the, the conference likes the idea of these players being able to make money, but not necessarily the way that we've seen some of the, the programs, especially the ones down south, uh, kind of using that for, for their benefit. 
I can see both ways on that, but but I, I like that the conference seems to be in alignment. Now, in terms of how you go about the regulations, I don't know. I mean, NAL came into existence because of state laws making it, you know, this wasn't a thing where the NCAA or schools came out and said, yeah, we're going to go do this. It was it was state legislation. And, and finally, everyone got on board. So, you know, I agree with Steve. I think there's bigger battles that need to be fought at that level. But if the NCAA is not going to do it on its own, it'd be, it'd be nice for somebody to do it so that we can have everybody playing with the same rules as opposed to what's happened the last year or so. Great stuff from Patrick Murphy and from Steve Hellwagon. Really appreciate my guys here in the hotel room. We're going to head on over to Lucas Oil Stadium here in a few minutes to cover the Buckeyes and the other six teams that are going at it today in Big Ten Media Days. Really appreciate you guys joining us as always. Love that you guys make us part of your morning, uh, you know, five days a week. Really appreciate it. I know you guys have a lot of choices. Really appreciate you guys making us a part of your morning. If you like the show, like, subscribe, give us a five-star review. All that really helps. Thank you very much to Patrick Murphy. Steve Hellwagon, keep it locked to Bucknuss today. Throw in, just throw in 12:30 today, Ryan Day on Big Ten Network. You can watch him live, and we'll have all the videos, everything afterward. Just want everybody watching the morning to know exactly what time to tune in and catch Coach Day. That's exactly right. Thank you for saying that, Steve. 12:30 p.m. Eastern time for Coach Day. Keep it locked to Bucknuss for everything. Thanks again to Patrick Murphy and Steve Hellwagon, and thanks to all of you. Go Bucks! Appreciate it. Hope everyone has a great day.